Will we see a return on investment in new exploration and production? I think so. I think there's been many years of uh, underinvestment in uh, exploration production, and a lot of the investment in exploration production was in kind of shale, uh, oil, and gas related uh, developments, while kind of the larger fields like the traditional uh, investments that EMP companies would make haven't really taken place. So there's been a lot of underinvestment. There will be a need to kind of uh, you know, do more new investment and there will be new investment. I think all the trends are showing that that will come, but it's still taking a bit of time to see some of that momentum coming. Okay, how, will, how have investment trends in the energy industry changed in the past five years? And, and what can we expect to see in the next five years? Well, in the last five years, uh, uh, energy transition has been the biggest trend. Uh, everything uh, about kind of making renewable energy scalable, but also kind of moving to new technologies that can support uh, the energy transition. Uh, what will happen next, I think, is more about kind of moving from uh, the energy transition to decarbonization, because it's not anymore only about decarbonizing the energy value chain, but it's also about decarbonizing the broader industry, like manufacturing, agriculture, uh, and just having a broader awareness. So we, you know, bringing the energy transition capabilities and mindset to other sectors and industries, while combining that with the latest challenges around energy security in the wake of Ukraine, as well as the whole discussion around affordability. So how can we get prices down? How can we make you know, uh, energy accessible for everybody? What due diligence considerations should be taken into account when, in, when, in, when in investing in the energy transition? The due diligence involved in that. There's a lot of uh, diligence involved and it's the typical things that we would look at. But I would say, you know, given that energy transition is relatively new, you look at what's the underlying technology. You know, we typically don't like taking too much technology risk, like we don't really want to invest in the newest technology. We'd rather invest in proven technologies. So we want to make sure that the technology actually works, that we can operate it, that we understand the costs of how much it's going to cost to build. Also in the light of all the inflation discussions, can we lock in prices today already? What are the costs of operations and maintenance going to be once the projects are operational? And what are your, what's the credit of your counterparties? You know, like ultimately, who are the people that are going to be paying for this? And can, actually, can they pay? Because it's going to take a long time to get your return on some of these investments. So you also want to make sure that the people that are going to be paying for it are going to be good for their money. I think that people have to just, and I think this is such a maybe a very simplistic way of saying it, but there needs to be patience in this. You can't just transition from one source to another in a quick time that's going to be a faster. This is, this is, a, this is, a, this is not a short. This is a long play. This is a long play and it's really about kind of like having the realization that you have to move to many shades of brown to shades of green and then you can get to this kind of net zero economy that we're all striving for. But it needs this transition. We need some of the oil and gas industry in the interim because you can't just switch it off and not invest in that anymore because you know energy demand is growing. Uh, there's more and more people wanting energy in many, many places around the world. And I think it's so interesting is if everyone just looked at what happened in six months with the war in Ukraine and how is just a percentage of oil has stopped coming from a place like Russia and how it is affecting Europe. And this is something that's not even a transition. This is just a cold stop. That if that's what they look at doing a transition, everyone in Europe is now realizing, wait a minute, we, we, can't, we can't live without oil. We need it to heat our homes where it's going to be an awful winter. I think if people actually use this as an example of, of when you do a hard stop on something, what the residual effect could be. Yes, and, and, and for some countries it's big. Like, you know, for Germany, you know, 30, 40 percent of all their gas was actually coming from Russia. So they need to find alternative ways of bringing that gas from other places. And, you know, you can't just kind of bring gas to a country because it's a, it's a gas, right? So it needs to go to either on a ship that needs to be refrigerated, then it needs to be regasified. So you need ships, you need LNG terminals, you need pipelines.